This video is going to be covering our digital painting project. In your folder for practice on this video, you're going to see this image. Be sure to go to Window, Workspace, and Reset Essentials to begin. At that point, take the Layers panel, click and drag the Layers panel out so you can see it. What we did in the beginning of this project is that we zoomed in here, we double clicked the word picture. Uh, originally it was zero like this, so just be sure that you're double clicking and naming your layers as you go. So we're naming this one picture. The next step is that we went to the little icon down here to create a new fill or adjustment layer. We clicked, we did solid color. And then from there, the color picker came up. We grabbed the color picker. We made sure that we selected the furthest white in the top left corner that we could pull it all the way to the top. You'll see it says six F's here at the bottom. Hit OK. That creates a brand new white color fill layer. You see it's white on the side here, but we want to see the girl. So we're going to take this layer, click, drag, and drop underneath the layer so you can see. So now you have two layers, color fill one, that's white, and the picture on top. We're going to click on the color fill one layer and click and hit this little lock button. This will lock everything on this layer. Then we're going to go to the picture layer, click on that one, and change the opacity down to a 55, or, or you can type it in. After you're done with that, you see it's kind of faded. We're also going to then lock that layer. The third step is we're going to click the new layer button here at the bottom. We're going to click, then we're going to double click, we're going to call that outlines. After we call that outlines, we're now going to, we're going to zoom out a little bit here so you can see, we're going to go to our toolbar on the side, we're going to go over to the brush tool. If you right click on a lot of these tools, you will see tools hiding inside of them, that's what this little arrow in the corner means. We're going to go to the brush tool. Once you go to the brush tool, be sure to go to the bottom of your toolbar down here. And right now you see I have red as my foreground, but I want to change this to black. So to get back to the default, you're just going to hit this little button here, which is the default color and background colors. You can hit D on your keyboard to get to it, and that will bring you right back to black and white. This little button will flip the colors, but we want black. So we got black. We have our brush here at the top. We are on still the outlines layer. And what we're going to do now is make sure the size of the brush is good for what we're working on. So you see it shows you you have the brush. You're going to click at the top here. You're going to select the second one on the list, which is just basically a solid circular brush, and we're going to change the pixel size to a 3 and 100% hardness. Make sure everything else at the top is normal and 100 and 100, and then you're going to start by making sure you zoom in, and you can use the space bar to click and drag around, and you're going to begin to draw, getting all the detail that you can on every part of this as much detail as you can. When you get to things like the eyelashes or eyebrows, you can do an outside edge, almost like a shell around it, like what I'm doing here, or you can do every little strand of hair. That's fine too. So you're going to continue to draw and get as much detail as you can around this entire thing. Every detail matters and do as much as you can. This one I'm working on now is the practice, but eventually you'll be doing one of yourself in a, uh, a higher quality um, version, but you're going to continue like that. So to fast forward things a little bit, I already have one here that's a little bit further done. Um, you can see what it looks like here. Uh, it's not completed totally, but it's, it's a little further than I had gotten. So when you feel you are done with the outlines, the best thing to do is hide the little eyeball, the visibility icon next to the layer right here. And now you can see what you have and what you still need to do. After you believe you are done with your outlines, and we're going to use the lips as the example here, so I'm going to zoom in onto the lips. When you feel you're done with your outlines, you're going to lock your outlines with the lock button. After that step, you're ready for color. So you're going to start by adding new layers for all the different parts of the face. So for example, I'm going to go down to the new layer button, click one time, change the name of it to lips, because that's the first thing that I want to color. I'm going to take this lips layer and pull it underneath the outlines, so the outlines are on top. We're going to try to keep the outlines on top as much as we can. So I have this new lips layer and I'm ready to color. So option number one is I go to my brush, I choose my color here at the bottom. On the color picker I can slide up and down the color slider here and I can choose whatever color I'd like. If I want to choose a color from the actual face, I would just have to turn this eyeball back on for a moment so I can see the original picture. Then, I'm still on the lips layer, I go over to choose my color here at the bottom of the uh, toolbar. When I click, instead of trying to choose the color inside the color picker, I can go outside the color picker and you see it turns into the eyedropper tool. And I can click and select the color. 
this is what Photoshop finds to be the color that I just clicked on. The only problem is it's 50%, 55% light, because remember I brought the opacity of that layer down. So you can still change it a little and make it a little darker. So I'm still doing option one here, which is lips layer, brush tool, pick your color, and then you can see here I'm going to start to paint. Now this brush is really small as I'm painting, so if I want to fill up more space, I have to go to the top and resize this brush, just make it a little bit larger. So you can fill up more space at once like this. The bracket keys on your keyboard next to the letter P will make your brush bigger and smaller so you don't have to go to the top of your screen to change it. So you could do the project this way, like I always say, but the problem is when you get to little spots, you're going to have to make the brush smaller and you're going to have to be really careful to try to do it just right and not go outside the line and you know make mistakes. So you could do it this way, but again, it takes a little bit of time. So I'm going to undo and show you the second option. Option number two, you go to the lips layer, you still make a new lips layer, still lock the outlines layer, but when you get to um, the time to paint, the first step would be back to the outlines for a moment. Use this magic wand tool and click in the area that you want to color. I have to do this only from the outlines layer and I'm going to click and you see it selects the lip. I'm also going to hit this one too. You see I have a little plus sign next to my uh, magic wand tool there. That's from up top here. This is the plus or add to button. If you click it, now you can add to your selection any other piece. This is only working because the line, the black lines here are closed up. If I tried to do it here, it wouldn't work. It would spill out into this whole area, but these are closed. So I click one and two, that's from the outlines layer. And now I'm ready to color. So I jump back to the lips layer here on the side and then when I use my brush now, and I have my color already from before, when I start to paint, look what happens. It stays inside the selection, and it does not let me go outside of it. If I make the brush bigger, I can do this very, very quickly. Looks really nice, nice and solid. You're going to start with solid colors on this. To get these little dots to go away, you're going to go up to the top, go to Select and Deselect or Command D on your keyboard. After you fill everything with solid color, you will have a look that is similar to, let me just bring one up real quick here. Okay, so something similar to this. The student is not totally complete, but you get the idea. They have layers for each thing. On the side here, you can see a layer for the face, a layer for the neck, layer for the lips, eyes, and they keep the outlines on top. The last and final step to the project, uh, though, really is highlights and shadows and then a background. So for highlights and shadows, again, I'm going to use the lips as the example. I'm going to go to the lips layer, and this time the only difference is instead of using this lock, you're going to use this lock, which locks all the transparent pixels. What that means is everything's locked except the pink that was already on that layer. So what does that mean we can do? It means that we can go over to the brush, go to the bottom, choose a slightly different color, let's say a little darker, for example. Hit OK. And then as I start to brush, I'm just going to make the brush smaller. Right now I have a hard edge brush. So if I start to paint over here, nothing happens. It's only going to let me paint inside the pixels that were already there, which is the pink. So it looks like this. Right? This is what we consider like a hard edge brush. I could change the color, click again on my foreground, go a little lighter this time, hit OK, and add some lighter colors. Again, make the brush as big or small as you would like, and I could add kind of that sort of highlight and shadow. Now the problem there is that they're sort of uh, hard edged, right? So if you want to blend them together, there's a tool on the side of your toolbar here called the smudge tool. And the smudge tool has sizes and shapes just like a brush. And you can change the size and shape up here. And it has strength. I'm going to keep it at about a 50 or so right now. And this is what it looks like when I start to use it. I'm going up and down on this, all right? Up, 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 down, down, down. And you can see how it's blending all the colors that are on that layer and it's kind of blending them together. I could go left and right, up and down, really doesn't matter. And I can actually like pull and drag and pull and drag until I get the look that I'm looking for. The smaller the brush, you know, the, the different this line's going to kind of look. The harder the strength, the stronger it's going to be. So you don't want to go too strong on it because obviously you see how messy it's it's getting. Alright? So for highlights and shadows, that's option one. 
Other option, real quick, I'm just going to kind of go back a little bit before I made those lines. Right there. Same thing, go to the lips layer, still lock the transparent pixels with this lock. Difference is when you go to the brush now, use a soft edge brush. Instead of 100% hardness, move that down to zero. And so now, as I use this brush, you can see it comes up looking like almost like an airbrush, right? It, it's a bit lighter than before. Then I could go again, change the color, make it darker. Maybe I do like this inside area. So I'm laying down color first. And then once you have the color laid down, you're going in with that smudge tool and you're beginning that smudging kind of a look. And be careful about the strength. Right now I have it way too high. So I'm going to go down to like a 50 or a 43 or something and just try to smudge a little bit left and right, up and down until you like it. If you don't like it, you could always undo, of course, or step backward to undo um, what you've what you've done. All right, so that's what you're going to begin to do for the entire face uh, for highlights and shadows. Um, when we get to the background, we'll make a separate video for just doing the background, but for now, that's all you need.